Let's take a look at another example of writing hyperbolas and seeing how just given a little bit of information allows us to actually produce uh, an amazing graph or in this case actually find an actual formula that describes the hyperbola. So let's check it out. Here's the information we're given. Someone's thinking about a hyperbola and they're told, we're told that it's centered at the origin, has a vertex, one vertex at 0 comma 4, and we're given the asymptotes as the lines y equal plus or minus 1 half x. We're supposed to actually produce the equation or the formula for the hyperbola. Well, the first thing we have to do is figure out, is this a horizontal hyperbola or is it a vertical hyperbola? And so that, of course, is going to all be determined by kind of where that negative sign should go. Should the negative sign be in front of the y squared term or the x squared term? We have to figure out by looking at kind of what's going on here. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to try to sketch a really, really lousy picture of this, just given this limited information. So there's no grid lines here. There's no numbers. Let's just have fun. Let's not think about it. Okay, what do I know? The thing is centered at the origin. So it means that whatever I do kind of here, I'm going to have to do here. Whatever I do here, I'm going to have to do here and so forth. We're given one vertex is 0 comma 4. So that's on the y-axis, 0 comma 4. Let's say that's right here. And since it's actually going to be centered at the origin, then I know where the other vertex is going to be. Remember, there's two wings to a hyperbola. So the other vertex will be, have to be at 0 comma negative 4. Ah, now that tells me everything. Because if I put in these two asymptote lines, which I'm just going to do very, I'm not even going to do it accurately. A line here, a line here. I'm not worried about at all accuracy. There are two lines. They both go through the origin, though, of course. Well, now I see if, if one point is here, it has to fit in this V. So it means it has to look like this. And since there's a point here, it has to fit in this V. And so that must be a very, very rough sketch of this hyperbola, which tells me that this is a vertical, a vertical hyperbola. So not a horizontal, a new, new, no enchilada. This is going to be a vertical one. And so this information cues me in on that. OK, so now I'm going to throw away the picture and focus in on the formula. Now, what's the other thing I know? I know where the asymptotes are. They're given by y equals plus or minus 1 half x. And remember what we learned for vertical hyperbola. The asymptotes in this case are always plus or minus a over bx. So what do we have here? What I see is that plus or minus a over b x is equal to plus or minus 1 half x, which if I cancel away the plus or minuses and I cancel away even the x, which you never do in life. You never cancel away the x. But here, it's the a and the b that I care about. I see that a over b equals a half. Well, that's partway there. But remember, I also am told that the focus, one of the, one of the sorry, the, one of the, the vertices is located at 0, 4. Well, that's going to be, in fact, uh, my a value. And so I see that, in fact, uh, my a value is going to be what? Well, it's going to be 4. So this value, the value for the vertex, is the location for where the a is. And so I know that a is 4, so I have 4 over b equals a half. And I have to solve this. There's a million ways of doing this. You can cross multiply if you like. And that shows you that b equals uh, 8. Because b times 1 equals 4 times 2, which is 8. Well, great. Well, that's the end of the story because I now know the formula. The formula is I already knew that the a is uh, 4. And now I discovered that the b is 8. And so I plug into the formula, and I see, since it's vertical, I start with y. y squared over 4 uh, squared, which is 16, minus x squared over b squared, which is 64, 
equals 1. That is the formula. So just given this information right here, we were able to write down a formula for the entire hyperbola. Even the points that are really, really, really far away, we can now dictate exactly how those points move by this exact formula. That's it. Amazing the power of understanding where the hyperbola comes from and how it's connected to its asymptotes and to its vertices. Enjoy thinking about the hyperbolas all around you in your everyday life, and I'll see you soon.